All right then gang, so before we go any further coding, I just wanted to show you a few things that might help you when you're developing websites, and that is using Chrome's developer tools. So we've briefly seen this in the past, all you have to do is right click and go to inspect, and then that's gonna open up the tools, or on Windows, you can just press F12, and that will do exactly the same thing. So we can use Chrome developer tools to debug our websites or just inspect elements, apply styles, and just basically play around with the website in the browser. You can make this panel bigger by just dragging it over to the left like so. And also you're gonna see loads of different tabs at the top over here. So the first tab and the one we've already briefly seen in previous videos as well, and the one that we're on by default is this elements tab. And that basically gives us an outline of the document with all of these different tabs that we can expand and see the tabs inside them. So that's quite nice to get this overview of the HTML. And as we hover over these, we can see on the left over here in the browser itself, or the viewport rather, we can see that when we hover over something, it highlights that element. Now, a few cool things you can do in here is, for example, right click an element. And if you're ever struggling to make up a CSS selector for a certain element and make it specific, you can go down here to copy and then go to copy selector. Now, if I was to just paste this somewhere and I'll go to the console to do that just briefly, you can see that now I have this selector. So I could use that in my CSS to make rules now. OK, so that's one nice thing you can do. Another nice thing you can do is right click this and you can go to edit as HTML. So if you want to make a quick change inside the browser itself, just to see if something is going to look good, then you can do that. Just click somewhere else to save this and we can scroll up and we'll be able to see this thing right here. So that's nice just for testing new features out. If you don't want to directly edit your code in the editor and save the file, you can just check it out right here and do that. Now you can also scroll down all this code and right click. And if you wanted to see this element, for example, in the viewport over here, you could right click and you could go to scroll into view. And then that's gonna take you to that section down at the bottom in the viewport. So that's a nice little feature as well. And also if we wanted to temporarily hide something, we could go to hide element and we're not gonna see that. That just hides it, it doesn't delete it. So we could right click and then uncheck that to see it again. But if we wanted to permanently delete this, we could go to delete element right here and it would delete it. Again, we can also do things like edit attributes. So I could say edit attribute to come in and edit this thing right here. Or if I wanted to add a new one, I could do that and type ID equals, you know, whatever. And that would add it as well. Oops, it didn't there. So let me try again, add attribute. ID is equal to whatever, press enter, there we go. So it gives it this ID now. So we can edit our code on the fly and see the effect it has in the browser. So this is really nice, just for testing things out, I suppose. Now, another cool thing about this tab is that we can also inspect all the different CSS styles given to it. Now, in our code at the minute, we've not given any of the elements their own CSS styles just yet, but we do have some default browser styles for some of these elements. For example, if I try and find an anchor tag, a link, right click and inspect. So this is selected over here. If I now move this up, we can see these are the styles that are currently given to this anchor tag right here. And they're all at the minute user agent styles. So they're default browser styles. But if I wanted to just play around with the styles of this individual element, I could do so right here. Come to where it says element.style and I could say something like color is gonna be red and that will style it on the page, just that one individual element. So this is nice if I wanna try out some different styles and preview them in the browser as I do them. So background could be black, like so. Now notice on any other rules, when something's overridden, then the previous rule becomes crossed out. So we can see when a rule no longer takes effect, it has this cross through it. That means that something else is basically more specific and it's overriding this value. Now, any other elements, not from the user agent style sheet, but any elements that we apply ourselves either from here or directly from our CSS file, we can check and uncheck just to toggle those and see the effect in the browser. And that's good when you're debugging. If you're trying to work out why something is displaying or positioned in some way, shape or form, then you can go through and uncheck different things until the error goes away or until you find out what's causing the problem or the issue. 
And one more thing, this little icon in the top left, if we check that, then it lets us hover over these different elements and notice on the right, it scrolls through the code. Let me just move this down a bit. It scrolls through the code and goes to whatever we hover on. So if I select an element and click it, then it's gonna show that over here. And also notice it's unchecked from here now. So if I want to do that again, I have to check this again. But also if we hover over something, notice up here, that little bubble, it shows you some different styles of that element as well. So that's nice. So all of these different features are really nice when we're just trying to, you know, play around with the website, mess around with some styles. And even when you're on someone else's website and you want to kind of reverse engineer what they've done, see how they've styled something or got a certain effect in the browser, we can use these different tools to do that as well. So really helpful. So the next tab I'd like to show you is this sources tab. And this is gonna give us a tree of different files and folders that make up our project. So it's gonna look very similar to the tree that we have in VS Code for this project. So we can see the index.html file. We can see the styles, nothing in there at the minute. We can also see inside the image folder, these different images as well. So that's nice. We can see all of the different sources that make up this website. And even better, we can edit those live inside this little editor on the right. So if I open up styles.css and I do something like this, I'm gonna target all div tags and I'm gonna say background is gonna be red. Now, if I do that, notice it updates live on the fly over here in the browser. I'm gonna take this thing off so it doesn't keep highlighting. And we can see this right here. I'm not sure if there's any other divs on the page. Don't think there is, but if there were, then it would style those red as well. Now, one word of warning. If I was to refresh this page, then I would lose that stuff over there. So be careful. If you write a lot of styles here and you intend to keep them, make sure that you copy them back over to your editor and save the file before you refresh your page. Because if you're not careful, you could find yourself losing an hour's worth of CSS or code. I've done it more than once. And believe me, it is not fun. So just a word of warning there. And that's even if you save the file. So for example, if I say div and then background is gonna be red. If I save the file and then refresh, it's still not gonna save it. Now we can combat this and we can make our saves permanent over here by going to the file system and then adding a folder to the workspace. So if I click this now, then I'm gonna go to documents. I'm gonna go to tutorial code, YouTube, then it's recording. This is where I keep all of my different project files. I'm gonna open up the HTML and CSS crash course. That's the folder that I also have open in VS Code. I'm gonna select that folder and then it adds it to the workspace. Now you have to allow up here for it to work. So allow, and then now, we can see these things right here. So if I was now to add something to the CSS right here in the file system, then I could save that. So let me say div, let me give this a background of red. And now if I save this by pressing Control and S on a Windows, then refresh, notice, now it stays there. And what's better, it's also gonna update in our code editor. So I could now open up VS Code, and go to styles.css and notice we have this rule right here. So I sometimes like to work this way because I then have available to me all of the different tabs and tools inside the developer tools and I can play around with the code and then save it when I think that I wanna keep that code. So that's useful, but do be careful because if you start playing around with it too much, making edits and saving and forgetting about them, when you go back to your code over here, you might not realize why something is there. So it can get a little bit messy after a while, but for doing certain sections on a website, it can be really useful to code over here, play around with it, save it, and then it's gonna auto update in your text editor. Now, if I wanted to, I could even add more files over here or folders. I could right click on this folder and say new file, you know, call this test.css, and I could write this as well. I could go to index.html, link up to text.css. In fact, we'll do that. Let me copy this dude and paste it in here, test.css. I'm gonna save this, and then inside test, I could say body, which selects the body tag over here. We've not seen that yet, but it selects the body tag, and then I'm gonna give this a background of green, okay? So if I save that now, notice over 
in my editor, we have this new test file. We also have inside the index file, a link to that test file as well, okay? So hopefully now this demonstrates how good these developer tools are and how they can help you when you're developing websites and just basically playing around or learning with code as well. So just very briefly, there's two more things I'd like to show you that probably are not going to be overly important to you at the minute. But as you progress into front end development even more, you might find yourself using them at some point. So first of all, we have this console tab. This is where we can do a little bit of JavaScript. So for example, I could just do an alert and say hello. I don't expect you to know what this is, but I'm just writing a bit of JavaScript. If I press enter, I can run that JavaScript and it's going to run on the page. And then we also have device preview over here as well. So we can view our websites in different devices. If I click on that, then we can see currently this is the iPad, but I can go to iPhone and different sizes over here as well. So I can preview the work I do on different devices. We also have a zoom level over there. If I go to 100%, that's the actual size of the phone right there. 75% just zooms out a little bit. I'm gonna change this back to iPad. And in fact, one more thing, this thing over here, you can also use this to kind of device preview as well at different widths because notice as I move this left and right, we can see if you look up here, the dimensions of the viewport. And this is going to be very useful when we start to work with media queries and responsive design where we display things differently for different widths or different viewport heights or basically dimensions in general. Okay. So there we go, my friends. That is the Chrome developer tools. We are going to be using them going forward to test different things out. I just wanted to make you comfortable with them for a few minutes so you're not lost when I'm using them in the future.